Welcome back everybody. Today we're getting into the holster that you see in my hand right here and you saw on my hip throughout the intro. This is a Safari Land 7TS holster with ALS technology in it. ALS is their automatic locking system. We'll get into that a good bit here uh, coming up a little bit later on. But first I sort of want to uh, go over why we're seeing this review here on the Mr. Guns and Gear channel today. So I generally don't review holsters anymore. I used to uh, in the past, and there's a couple reasons why I really don't. Number one, uh, the ratings or views on them are really low and they started to really trail off. So I just started to say no holster reviews. It's just not something I do, but I do try to mention them in other videos, as you guys know, who watch the pistol reviews here on the channel. That said, uh, there's a big, huge debate on the internet, of course, over um, a competitor line of this, which has the finger button activation. And there's a huge debate on uh, my Facebook page about it, and everyone was saying, you need to get check out the ALS, you need to check out the ALS, you need to check out the ALS. I had like 30 comments out of 100 that were pretty much the same way, and I had never used one of these personally. So ordered one up, got it in, and I have to say, uh, generally speaking, those viewers are right. So. Um, it seems to be a very solid setup with a very good system in it. So we're going to get into those details coming up next after the dogs check it out. Getting into the details of the holster, it is available in this sort of tan color that you see here, as well as black. Who knows, Safari Land may come out with something else down the road. But basically, it's a level one retention holster, as you guys see it right here. And what's cool about it, um, we'll probably go over this a few times and put guns inside of it a few times during this video. But as soon as you reholster, you're automatically in level one retention. So what do I mean by that? Well put our gun in there. I did nothing special. I didn't touch any buttons. I didn't move any hoods. I didn't flip any switches. And automatically we are in level one retention where the gun will not come out until we depress this little button right here, which is how it's activated. So real easy to activate. It's very intuitive. If you're naturally coming up with a high grip, get your thumb right there, flick it down and it will come out. It allows you to draw it. So in terms of that, it's a very natural draw stroke you don't have to do anything uh, with your trigger finger which I know a lot of people like over some competitive options out there and again you don't have to do anything to get into level one which is really good so say you're a um, law enforcement officer you know just a random civilian uh, responding to a situation when you have to use your firearm or pull out your firearm and don't use it which is obviously the better scenario when you go to reholster you can go hands-on with somebody without having to again hit the buttons or switches and that way you are automatically have that level one retention which is definitely a good thing speaking of retention while we're on it uh safari land has kind of a system of different add-ons and stuff that you can add to change the retention level of this holster they have hoods uh folding uh covers and stuff like that so there are ways to add uh, level two retention to this and they sell those pieces separately. So if you want more retention, you can, but this is how it comes uh, from the factory. One thing that's really nice about this holster compared to some, again, competitive options out there on the market is that any of the Safari Land uh, mounting accessories will fit it. So this one here, of course, is set up for their sort of concealed carry. It's very snug into the body. But if you want to put, say, a paddle on there, you can you move these uh, three switches out, which are also adjustable for cant and the drop of the holster so you can move it up and down. Um, but this obviously is the belt one, and you can see there this is designed sort of for civilian belts, which is how I've been wearing it. But if you wanted to open it up and use more of a duty size rig, you can do that. But they have, uh, again, the paddles, this one. They have ones that are uh, compatible with drop leg holsters. They have ones that are compatible with chest rigs. So really any sort of attachment um, out there that you can think of, the Safari Land mounting options are there for it. The material the holster is made out of is a nylon material. It has no Zytel or glass uh, infused in it like you're going to see with a lot of other polymers out there. Um, it feels sort of rigid. You can see it compresses a little bit there, but down here on the bottom, let's say, there's really almost no compression to it. One thing about the holster that they advertise and uh, that I've found at least so far in my use is that heat uh, doesn't have any effect on it. So I've had this out on the range. I think the last time I was on the range with this, it was 107 degrees and about as humid as you could possibly get and there was no swelling issues or anything like that um, in terms of the draw so it's certainly a good thing but it's rated uh, from negative 50 
degrees all the way up to 300 degrees. Of course, that's Fahrenheit for you folks watching overseas. So even if you're out in Alaska or something like that, of course, I know some places it probably gets below negative 50, but most of the time you'll be just fine uh, drawing it out. And there's some other cool features uh, involved on the actual inside of the holster. So um, the way it's designed, it's designed both with the actual material that I talked about, the special DuPont material, um, that it won't scratch your guns. So I'm just going to sort of rub this against it and, you know, no finish wear at all on the Glock, which of course Glocks are relatively, uh, scratch resistant anyway. But if you look inside there, you'll see those little lines, um, and the inside of the holster. And those are designed to sort of guide it in, uh, they're, on the opposite side as well. And when you're actually going to reholster, there's very little friction. There's also very little friction when drawing, which I do like. However, once it's retained, the friction's there. So if say you're just going into holster it, you can see I'm trying to put as little resistance as possible, just a little nudge to get it in there. If you have a magazine in your gun, uh, you're not even gonna have to do that. But again, as soon as it's retained, uh, it's about as solid as you can get. I mean, you can really pull. You can see my hands are turning white from trying to pull it out, and it stays in. So that certainly is a good sign. When you want to draw it, again, we're just going to hit with the thumb, come up, and you can see just how smooth the draw is. Um, really, it's excellent in that regard. The model we have here, of course, is for the Glock series of pistols, Glock 17. The 19s and 26s do fit in this. However, uh, they make holsters specifically for those guns as well. And they do have a wide variety of holsters, which I was actually pleasantly surprised to see. Again, you kind of expect it with Safari Land, they're a bigger company. Um, so that's certainly a good thing. Just because I wanted to show it off here on camera, uh, the G, or the Generation 1 rather, Glock 17, will also fit. So regardless of the generation Glocks you have, you don't have to worry about the actual retention all the way down to the Gen 1. Retention is good and it draws out just fine. There's only so many things to go over with a holster review and I think we hit most from there, although this is a pretty feature rich holster, so more than most. Um, a couple things to mention, people always wanna know cost of course, and if you go over to Safari Lens website, which we'll put a link down below for all of you guys, uh, these are generally gonna be 49 to $65 depending on the options you have. Um, and speaking of those options, they do offer a wide variety of firearms. Like I mentioned earlier, they also offer these with uh, light equipped guns. So if you wanna carry like a TLR-1 or something like that, on your pistol, you can do so when they make holsters for it that have the same retention and everything else that we talked about earlier. There are other places to get these, of course, if you go over to Amazon and you have like a really common gun. So for instance, like this one for a Glock 17, uh, they're over there, they may be a little bit cheaper um, just because they're already pre-listed and all that stuff. But um, price-wise, I think that's pretty reasonable for what you get. It's a good holster, it's a good quality holster, it has good retention like we talked about, it has a smooth draw, it's easy to learn how to draw and defeat that retention. But uh, if, you know, if somebody went to grab it off you, I think most criminals, it's, it's hard to say, but most criminals probably wouldn't know how to do it. Of course, criminals learn a lot of things when they're in jail, so who knows. But some retention is better than no retention for sure, particularly if you're open carrying. So. Of course, this could work fine for open carry in the states that that's legal and scenarios that that's legal. But with that sort of slim mounting system on there, uh, concealed carry it would work as well for outside the waistband. It is nice and tight to your body. Um, here in the winter months, I could absolutely concealed carry this with say like a sweatshirt. Even with a full size Glock 17, it would work just fine. I'm sure many of you who live in colder climates, uh, the majority of the year would be able to uh, do so as well. So overall, very happy with the holster. I will be getting more of these. You'll probably see them in some pistol reviews uh, coming up in the future. So that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions about this holster, anything I didn't discuss here in the video, by all means you can post down below in the comment section. However, the best way to get in touch with me these days is over at Facebook. I tend to see more of those comments and questions over there than I do here on YouTube. So if you have a question that you really need answered, that's the place to get me. Uh, otherwise, I periodically do monitor the comments here on YouTube, Full30, and other places. So that's about it, guys. If you are subscribers, thank you very much for subscribing. If you're not subscribed and just found this through a Google search or a YouTube search, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you like what you see. But thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.